Welcome to Real Black. I'm Big Sis. Billy D. Williams is a true artist. As a legendary actor, he's best known for his roles in Mahogany, Lady Sings the Blues, Brian's Song, and The Empire Strikes Back. As an established painter, he was the featured artist at the October Gallery's 2006 Art Expo. The thing I always love about art that I always look for in actors, I look for even in paint in everything, is nuance and subtlety. If you have that gift, some people have a gift for it, and some others have to develop it. But if, if it's, but that always has to be a part, because that's really what tells the story. You know, you know, you paint your broad strokes, and that which is obvious to the eye, but it's all those little tiny, just those little things. That, you know, you just throw in there. Why is art so important for for African Americans to pay attention to? Because you've been covering this pretty heavily. Well, one thing to keep them out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> Do <laughs> say, <laughs> no, you know that's. I think that's in many ways that's that's true. I think I always I've always said that you know if if the schools would make the proper appropriations, you know uh, a lot of these people wouldn't be in uh, prisons. You know I think a, a child <coughs> should, from the very beginning, at a very early stage in their life, uh, be exposed to you know uh, appreciating, uh, participating and appreciating in the arts whether it be painting, music. I mean, listen, I remember, because I come out of the bebop era, and I knew a lot of those guys, you know, and a lot of those dudes were, if they didn't have the music, <laughs> they'd be shooting and killing people. See, but that's a good, that's a very good point. And, and it's funny, um, plus you, you came out of, and I can't say from the perspective of coming from there, but let me phrase the question this way, Harlem, Harlem, Harlem Renaissance period, arts, culture, oh, music? It was, it was great when I, when I was a kid. I mean, it was great in many ways, you know, when I was a kid uh, growing up in, in Harlem. You know, I grew up on 110th Street, right across the street from Central Park, so me and my friends owned the park. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. It was a great time. See, and I'm guessing, and it goes with your comment, when, when we saw uh, musical instruments taken out of urban public schools, maybe we saw another kind of behavior increase because children didn't have the arts and some kids don't have paint sets and so on. Yeah, kids need it. You have to, it creates a balance in their life, you know, and uh, it's unfortunate people don't think about that. What's been the evolution of your work? Because I saw you in D.C. and you were promoting art almost in the same way you're doing now in Philadelphia. You were everywhere. You were doing a lot of things. You were getting the word out. How has your work, though, developed over time to get where it is now? Number one, I think if you really want to grow, you have to practice all the time you know I think that's the only way you can really discover things is to constantly be doing something even if it's not good but you just keep doing it until it somehow you find you find that that place you want to you want to you want to be at you know you can have it in your head but to try to to execute it put it down to you know to put it on a piece of canvas let's say or even as an actor is uh, it's a real process uh, for me, at this point, for instance, I, I, I'm really becoming more interested in, in a, a minimalist approach to things. Hmm. Hmm. You know, you know, I always loved Monk because uh, he was it was minimal. I mean, you listen to uh, uh, Bellington, mm -hmm. it, was min it would go ping, but it would tell a whole story. Uh, you listen to Wayne Shorter, you know, the way he plays. You know, it's 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 minimal, but yet it 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 just creates this huge, unbelievable kind of powerful uh, structure or color or colors. I said to my daughter one time, I live in a gray area. She says, "Daddy, you can't live in a gray area." I says, "Well, let me try to explain." I said, "I see myself a, 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 the full spectrum of colors. I my life is an eclectic life, and I think that's the best way to go about life because that's where the fun is when you're." That's like living between two arguments. Mm. You know, when you embrace this point of view or you embrace that point of view, you sort of limit yourself to those two viewpoints. For me, I'm like, in, I'm sort of this guy running around in between, checking that out, checking this out, and then putting it all together into some thought pattern or some idea I have in my head that I, I want to talk about or express. Well, the book, you know, is... is I remember seeing Black Orpheus, and I saw it. That was probably the only movie I've ever seen about 25 times. Mm -hmm. 
And it really left an impression on me, the whole ex experience in Brazil, where you have people f with African, European, and Indian blood, and the beauty that, he, that comes out of it. And not only the beauty, but the energy that comes out of it. So I wanted to talk about, tell a kind of a romantic story, which somehow revolved around uh, the whole Brazilian scene. Hmm. But it, what I'm really trying to say is that everything that I do, even with my painting, even with my acting, I'm always trying to bring things to uh, beyond the level of, of politicizing. Uh, well, I, I try to bring it to a, a level where um, you're not just looking at the uh, ethnicity, but you're looking at a person going through what most persons go through you know, in their daily life. Was Star Wars the big bang for you in terms of the, you know, the comfort where you got to the point financially? It was like, okay, now after this, I can really do what Sonny wants to do in terms of my calling. Well, in that, in the, uh, during those years, uh, I was on the contract to Barry Gordy uh, for seven years, and that really kind of got me started. Um, interestingly enough, you know, when my father passed away in 73, he lived long enough to see me start moving forward in, in a way that uh, made him feel comfortable. Uh, but he waited. Uh, I was out in California. He was in New York. He was in the hospital. He was dying. And he waited for me to, to come to New York before he he went out. So when I got there, and he, and, uh, he was in the hospital bed telling jokes and stuff like that, dying and telling jokes. And, then, uh, and finally he held my mom's hand and said, what's my little girl going to do without me? It was a beautiful moment between two people after 30 four years, I think, of marriage. Um, and as he went out, I could feel him come into me. Um, and something in my head said, now you're the titular head of the family. And from that point on, things just started happening for me, one thing after another. And, um, and I was able to uh, happily take care of my family, even though a lot of them pain in the ass. But, um, <laughs> um, but um, when Star Wars, certainly the, the, the seven years Star Wars um, was a big plus in my life. Doing the, having my own fragrance was a big plus in my life. Doing Colt 45 for 10 years was a big plus in my life. Um, uh, and also having a, 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 a yeah, I think it's so important when you make some when you make money, you you invest your money. You try and f to find ways to invest it, and hopefully you invest in things that 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 will make you r wealthy or that things that don't wipe you out anyway. Um, and I, you know, I I just uh, you know I just decided to 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 even through some of my frivolity to somehow maintain a, um, some stability in my life. Because it wasn't just me that I, I had to concern myself about. I had to concern myself about my family. And I come from a, a background where men, I'm from the old school, where men take care of their family. You know, there's no excuse to me when I, when I hear a man about a man that doesn't take care of his family. As you look back reflectively, um, being older, because you don't look older, by the way. You look like you're in great shape. If I can borrow some of your jeans, well, you I'll know, be blessed. 175 is pretty, I've been doing pretty good for 175 years old. You look, you look great. Old. You look great. As this old man once said to me, Billy, I said, I, he's in his 90s. I work out with him. And he's in his 90s. And he says, I said, man, if I, can, I sure hope I can look like you, can look like you when, I'm, when I'm your age. And he goes, Billy, it's in the jeans. <laughs> <laughs>